This laptop here is my trusty old HP 4430S. Even though this laptop is very old, it still has a really great keyboard and its 1080p display and wonderful battery life make it good enough for everyday usage. But recently, it has started to slow down quite a bit. The CPU on this laptop can easily be changed because it has a physical socket instead of being soldered directly onto the motherboard. More specifically, this laptop comes with the G2 socket, which supports a wide selection of processors. So, in this video, I am going to replace its old processor with a newer and much faster one. This video is a two-part series in which I am going to completely upgrade this laptop from the inside out. Before we start, flip the laptop over so we can remove its battery and open its backplate. Let's get started. This is the package that I received from eBay. It came packaged very nicely and was labelled fragile to ensure that it got to me in perfect condition. This is the processor we got. It is an i7 second generation, specifically the i7-2630QM. On the back of it, we can see the beautiful array of golden LGA pins. While I open up the laptop, I have listed the specs of both the new and old processors. Before opening the laptop, make sure to remove the battery and drain any stored charge by pressing the power button. Hold down the power button for at least 3 to 4 seconds to fully dissipate any stored or residual charge. Not doing so could damage your components. By removing the backplate, we can see the laptop's internals. We will start the heatsink disassembly by disconnecting the fan header. Use a small Phillips head screwdriver to remove the fan screws. I am using this screwdriver which has a small head and a good grip. Then use a flat head Phillips screwdriver to remove the other screw. Gently wiggle the fan to loosen it from its place. The fan cannot be removed before unscrewing the heatsink. Use a larger Phillips screwdriver to unscrew the heatsink. The screws require a bit more force, as this is the first time I am removing the heatsink. Remove the screws in a diagonal pattern to alleviate the pressure on the CPU in a uniform and even manner. Gently shake and lift both the heatsink and fan simultaneously to remove the fan. This is the default fan the laptop ships with. We can see quite a bit of dust trapped in it. Gently remove the heatsink as it is crammed under the plastic ventilation grill in a tight corner so it may require additional effort. This is the heatsink. It is also very dusty and the old thermal paste has also gotten dry over the years. Use a small flathead screwdriver to rotate the CPU socket notch in an anti-clockwise direction. This requires a rather large amount of force to rotate it. Gently remove the old CPU from its socket. This is the cute little i3 the laptop came with. This little CPU has worked hard for a lot of years now and will finally get a well-deserved rest. The little golden edge on it indicates the orientation in which the CPU must be installed to fit into the socket. We will now take the i7 and install it into the socket. Make sure to match the golden edge with the corresponding symbol on the socket. To properly secure it into place, the little notch on the socket must now be rotated clockwise with a screwdriver. This again requires quite a bit of force to do so. The mini flathead was not able to do the job, so we have to use a larger one, which will allow us to put in a lot more force. After a fierce battle with the notch, the CPU is secured properly in place. The CPU should look something like this. Before we begin closing the laptop again, the CPU heatsink and fan need to be cleaned properly to ensure that this new beast of a processor doesn't suffer from third degree burns and suffocation. Just look at this massive ball of dust. No wonder the old CPU was suffering from a ventilation problem. I will be back in a sec. Yup. So now that I have thoroughly cleaned both the heatsink and the fan, I also went ahead and removed the thermal paste from the heatsink with isopropyl alcohol. The heatsink is now looking as good as new.
Doing the same for the CPU fan, I have cleaned it properly with a small brush to ensure that it is able to circulate air properly without any kind of hindrance. I am now going to clean the i7 with 99% isopropyl alcohol and cotton swabs as it has some old thermal paste dried on it. We need to make sure that it is properly cleaned before applying the new thermal paste. After cleaning, it should look like this. I am going to apply a new thermal paste. I am using Arctic MX4 thermal paste, which is very good and I have had very good results with it previously. I have given an affiliate link to it down below. That does not cost you anything extra, but it will help the channel a lot and allow me to produce more quality content like this. As a good rule of thumb, a small pea-sized drop is sufficient for a laptop. Generally, just putting on the heatsink without spreading the paste is recommended, but in my case, it is important to spread it with a spatula as the heatsink needs to be wedged into place, and that could cause partial coverage of thermal paste. After spreading the thermal paste, it should look a bit like this. Though it isn't the best application, it will still work. Gently wedge the heatsink back into place, making sure not to touch the paste until the heatsink has been properly fixed in place. Make sure to properly line up the heatsink and motherboard holes for proper contact with the CPU. After the heatsink has properly sat in place, tilt the screws back in a diagonal manner for proper mounting pressure. After that, mount the fan back in its place and tighten the screw properly. Connect the fan connector into its socket and close the laptop's back lid. Connect the battery back and flip over the laptop. We can now boot it up to verify that our laptop is booting properly and that the system recognizes the new processor. Upon pressing the power button, the laptop jumps to life. Here we can see that our system has successfully recognized the new processor and is working normally. The system BIOS version is 68 SRR version F65. In my next video, I am going to upgrade this laptop's RAM storage and Bluetooth card along with a new Wi Fi 6.0 dongle. Thanks for watching the tutorial. Please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on my new videos.